Ableton's electric instrument is one of the most underrated instruments in Ableton. It's included in Suite, and I think a lot of producers underutilize this device because they might load up a few presets and think it sounds fairly average. But in reality, they just haven't unlocked the full potential of this device through tweaking these presets and adding a bunch of post-processing. So in this video, I just want to show you the power under the hood of this device so that you can create these amazing sounding electric pianos like you just heard. Make sure you stick around for the whole video because there's a bunch of processing techniques that you need to use in unison in order to get these sounding good. So don't skip through. And of course, before you jump into this video, if you want some free stuff, just check a little link down in the description that I just left for you guys. But let's get straight into it. So one thing I want to show you is that the electric device here, and I've got one of the presets, the MKL1 Dirty Piano. Sounds like this. Let's go turn up the volume here. And it sounds all right, okay? And there's a few other presets, some of which sound good, some of which don't really unlock the full potential of this amazing device in Ableton. Now, if you're not aware, the uh, electric device is aimed to model both Wurlitzer and Rhodes type instruments, which are famous electronic or electric keyboards that have this really nice warm kind of character to them, hence the sound you get when you play it. And there's a whole bunch of parameters you can tweak down here to get it sounding like a variety of different electric pianos. But um, one thing that a lot of people don't know is that the technology in this particular device is actually manufactured or coded by Applied Acoustic Assist. Applied Acoustic... Jeez, it's really hard to say. Applied Acoustic Systems. And Applied Acoustic Systems, I'm just going to say AAS from now on because it's much easier. They actually are the same people behind the Lounge Lizard plugin, which sounds and looks a bit like this. Give that a bit of volume as well. And it's a really commonly used um, electric piano plugin, and it's probably one of the best out there. And as you can see, it's made by AAS. And the same technology that lies under Lounge Lizard is actually the same technology that's been incorporated into the Ableton Electric instrument. So there's a lot of similar sounds. And as you can hear, there is a great deal of um, similarity between these two sounding instruments. Yes, they're not exactly the same because the presets are slightly different, but you're getting the point here, right? They sound super similar because they're the same technology. So we can utilize electric to in a way that makes it sound amazing. Now, a lot of the presets in Lounge Lizard incorporate effects like the compressor, EQ, chorus, distortion, reverb, etc. And this is going to make a big difference in terms of the sound. The uh, edit section of this device as well, the Lounge Lizard plugin, also has a few more options that we can't necessarily do just in the electric piano, um, electric plugin in Ableton, but we can use third party or uh, some of Ableton's audio effects to kind of mimic it, including the tremolo, uh, the kind of stereo effects that are going on. And, but that being said, there is a lot of similarity between the two here. You can see there's a hammer section, which is the mallet section down here. Stiffness and force are pretty much the exact same there. You've got a fork section, fork section up there got a pickup and damper section down here. The only real thing we don't have in this plugin is the tremolo. Uh, and that's what we can achieve with the auto pan plugin as I'm about to explain. So these are very, very similar devices use this, using the same technology. So I'd highly recommend still checking out Lounge Lizard because it does have a few other functionality uh, and bits and pieces that aren't included in electric. So it's a great plugin in and right of its own. And I highly recommend you check it out if you want an all in one solution for an electric piano. But we're going to be sticking to just electric today and making it sound incredible. So if we head back to that original example you heard at the start of the video, I'm just going to play it again. This is a bit more of a muted kind of electric piano sound, which is great for those kind of neo soul or jazz funk inspired genres of electronic music. Or if you're making non electronic music that too great in hip hop, etc. 
Now what I've done is I've tweaked not only this uh, preset here to make it sound better, but I've also added a bunch of processing and stuff afterwards in the second version, just to give it a sense of space and movement and just life to the sound. And I'll go through and show you exactly what I've done. So if we head to the first one here, we can see there's a few differences, if I go between the two, in some of these parameters. Now what I've done here is, I first and foremost have brought down the force, I've made it a little less uh, hardcore. And if I turn off all of these effects actually, so you can actually hear the difference between the two raw versions. I've just added a bit more mid-range into this one because of the processing that I'm about to add, and that's a big part of it. Uh, a lot of the presets tend to have a lot of low mids, which is why a lot of people tend to stick away from this instrument, but some of the effects we're gonna add take out or slash distort the low mids to make them a bit less intense. So that's why we're just adding a bit more in there. I'm also adding a bit less of the noise, the mallet noise by bringing the decay down and also the level down to 24% here. Uh, I've also brought down this dampener tone, once again, making it a bit softer as opposed to that there. It's a bit of a subtle difference. And that's pretty much the main differences there. We're not doing a whole lot to that. The main things come through this processing, which I'm gonna go through step by step and I'll delete this one since we're not actually using it right now. And I'm gonna just disable all of these plugins. Great, so the first one I am uh, adding in here is some overdrive. Now you can mimic this effect by actually increasing the pickup input and then reducing the output. But in this particular case, I wanted to control it with a third party plugin or an external plugin rather. And this is just adding a nice bit of crunch to the mid range in a really subtle amount. If you drive it up more, it's a bit too intense. And then we bring down the dry wet to kind of a nice level. It just adds a bit more life to the sound. It's very subtle, but because we want this to sound as organic as possible, uh, the subtle differences do matter. And that just makes it sound a bit more lively. A lot of the other sound, which is an effect that I'm also mimicking from the Lounge Lizard Pleasant is the chorus here. And this just gives it that nice pitch wobble. And that kind of width as well to the sound. And this makes it sound really nice and thick. Of course, you can control the amount of dry weight here, but this really adds that thickness to the sound that makes it sound professional. So I really like that. And then of course the tremolo, we're gonna be adding in with the auto pan plugin here. Now you can use the square or the, the sign and then bring up the shape here to kind of turn it into a square. The best part about using this one is that you can customize the exact shape of the pan. I've got it on about 60% of the pan so it's not full hard left and right and the rate at a kind of comfortable amount that just sounds like smooth. You can sync it to the BPM of your host tempo if you wish, but I like the free flowing Hertz LFO. And this is the real kicker because it adds that classic kind of uh, electric piano whirl it's a sound. And that's a big part of the sound there. So. That is essential. Make sure you leave the phase at 180 and not zero so you get the full auto pan effect and not just standard tremolo. Put that back there. We've also got the amp and the cabinet device. Now these are adding the real crunch to this signal. A lot of times people would add amps and cabinets to Wurlitzers and Rhodes pianos because it would just give them a nice character. Now this is an optional extra but I do think it is a really nice addition it really gives it some crunch. And with both of these effects, you can dry wet them back so they're not 100%, which is another extra layer of control that you have. And this is just adding some nice crunchiness to the tops. We're taking out some of the, the bass and the mids, which you can shape exactly as you want. I wanted to take out a lot of that mid range originally, but which the kind of clean preset on Ableton's amp does here. By the way, any kind of um, amp will do here. The, the clean kind of sounds like a 60s amp, which is great for those old school piano sounds uh, and guitar sounds for that matter. 
Uh, we're stereo outputting it, so we're treating it like two amps as well, not mono. And then we're putting it into a dual cabinet. You can use a condenser or a dynamic. Dynamic tends to have a bit more low mids. But I wanted to take out a lot of those low mids so that they weren't overpowering. And that really shapes the tone there. Once again, if we just turn those off, really does a big difference there. Uh, we can bring down the gain and bring in the bass and mids a bit if we want a bit more of a cleaner sound. And also we can even dry wet it. That's going to add that crunch while still retaining some of the original signal, which is quite nice. Think of it like as if you're blending in an amp with a direct line signal for those of you who are traditional kind of guitar players or whatever. And then we're just cutting out some unnecessary low end with EQ. Just a functional little thing there. We don't want any kind of low mid artifacts, which can sometimes come out of amps when you have the noise, etc. And then lastly, to top it off, we're just adding some reverb and delay to just give that professional sheen. Reverb and delay both just tend to add this extra source on top of any sound and they're commonly used to just give a professional edge. So I'm gonna switch them both on. First and foremost, we've got an unsynced delay here, not on ping pong, so it's a mono delay uh, with a, just a bit of mid-range delay here. So we're not doing a whole lot. And there's not a long tail there. We could probably even bring it up. And this mid-range delay here doesn't pick up any of that attack in the upper mids as much. It just picks up the main kind of bulk of the sound there. We can even increase the feedback. And that's just adding a nice bit of space to the sound. Could even go longer if you are inclined that way. But I think about there sounds nice. And then lastly, we're just topping it up with some nice kind of reverb here, just to give it a bit of space. Uh, we've got quite a long decay time and this just makes it sound professional. Of course, you can tweak this to the exact settings you might like. Some people don't like super long reverb tails, but I like the effect this has here. That just adds that nice bit of space for me there. We can even cut out more of the lows if we want. And there we go. So through these main effects that we've covered here, overdrive, Chorus, mind you, overdrive can be replaced with driving the input on the pickup. Uh, auto pan to give that tremolo effect. Amp and cabinet optional if you want that kind of crunchy electric piano sound. EQ is optional just to shape the tone. And then obviously reverb and delay are also optional there to give it some extra professional sheen. Um, but that just makes it sound once again. From that. It just brings this sound to life. And that is such a versatile sound that you can use in pretty much any electronic genre, to be honest. And it all comes from pretty much stock Ableton plugins, which is amazing. Now, of course, once again, if you're not in Ableton, the Lounge Lizard plugin is a great way to get this functionality in your DAW, which I'll leave a link for in the description. This isn't sponsored by them. I just do think it's a great plugin. Um, but yeah, this has been how to make the most out of Ableton's electric. If you have any other tips for Ableton's electric, please let me know down in the description. Apart from that, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked this content, make sure to subscribe to the EDM Prod YouTube channel where we do weekly videos at the moment. I hope you guys have all been enjoying the content. Give it a like if you thought it was good because that helps us out. Uh, and also just give us a, you know, share, share this with someone who needs help with this kind of thing, who thinks electric sucks because tell them they're wrong and show them that it's good. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Remember the free downloads in the description and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good week.